Welcome back everyone to Let's Play Rule the Waves as Russia. Lots of money in the bank, but I think I've actually decided to hold off on making that battle cruiser not quite yet. I think it's a little too early. I'm hoping that maybe some intel effort stuff can help us out. In fact, it's a little bit risky, but I guess we'll increase it against the United States as well. I imagine their tech is also really high because they have good education, good stuff. Um, it's a little risky for us to increase it against Great Britain as well, but I don't really know any other way. This is, when I was thinking about it a bit off camera, I was thinking, you know, well, if you have really poor education, maybe your best way of researching these texts is just to steal them from other people. So we'll try that out a little bit. I doubt it'll have like massive success, but even if it gets us like one quality one, in, uh, one quality one gun, then we can build on that for our next battle cruiser. And we should be amassing quite a amount of money, uh, a sizable amount of money for um, that new type coming up soon. Another thing we could do, which is we are in a good position to do it already, is we could make like a kind of super torpedo boat like cruiser with five inch guns. Because remember, we don't have the six inch guns, but we do have the five inch guns at quality one. So that's one thing we could do. We could also go with a, yet another destroyer design because these guys have, I think they have quality. I want to say they have quality zero. Yeah, they have quality zero four inch guns. So we could go with something. You know what? Actually, I don't think that's really necessary because they're not going to be using their guns a whole lot anyway. So yeah, probably it is time for a light cruiser. And we don't have that many light cruisers left. It's not many combat effective ones, at least. Only these few Rubens. How many is this? Eight? Seven Ruben classes. Yeah, probably maybe a light cruiser next before our battle cruisers. Although we're just getting hammered on the battle cruiser front, uh, surprisingly. I mean, eh, not surprisingly. If we have one, let's change this guy to active because he's on. Let's get this guy to raid instead. Um, these are treaty class. These are our treaty class ships, so they are just simply underwhelming against any ships beyond that twenty thousand ton limit. So, not surprising. But okay, so we're slowly making gains on the Germans in terms of getting their unrest higher. Okay, Diana. Okay, Sapphir. Three Germans. Okay, that's good. Well, this is not necessarily good because we know with the, how the battle cruiser stuff has been going. But I think if we're a little more cautious, so that's interesting. They declined. Let's accept the convoy attack. I'm kind of. Whoa. Oh my gosh. Oh, holy cow. It's everyone. Our new Cessor. Oh, I am excited. This is exciting. Oh, what a beast. There they are. The Cessorovich class. And uh, unfortunately, they're towing along with them a Repizen. Now, because I did not make the Cesarevich very fast, the max speed is 19 on this guy, and it's only 20 on these guys. This truly is one of the advantages of making your fleet, your Dreadnought fleet, your battleship fleet, all one speed in particular. If you can manage to do that, then having these mixed groups is not a huge disadvantage. I can still eventually get these guys to separate by doing just forcing them to go 20. But you can imagine how long it's going to take that to happen. Only a one knot difference is going to be a long time before the Red Vizen actually detaches. On top of that, we have the Humanity, the Molotov 2. Molotov 2 just returning from her successful raid on, uh, or sinking of a German battlecruiser. Oh, we just have everybody here, yeah. So all of our battlecruiser fleets are here. McStabman, the Mal 39. And then their escort, their, oh wow, this is so interesting. So we've basically cornered, it looks like we've cornered the fleet. They're going to have the wind disadvantage, we'll have the wind advantage. Not a big deal when you get to later games with the oil and all that, but still something. We'll take any little advantage we can eke out. And we are, like, in the thick of it. To say that this is an unidentified ship is almost weird because... <laughs> We're so close to them. Hard to imagine 
how we're not actually able to see them. So we'll get these guys to go squad max just to start reacting as quickly as possible. I'm going to slow that down just so the Rubin itself can catch up. Although the Bullslav, if this is a heavy cruiser or any kind of decent light cruiser, we might be in for a world of hurt. Um, let's get these guys to go core line ahead. This is definitely our new uh, destroyer group. This is crazy that we're into this battle, though. And let's get these guys to start speeding themselves up. Actually, let's keep them down to like 23 or so and get our battle cruisers to line up with each other as fast as possible. Are these guys my old ones? No, these are still the Bravi class, which is... I that we could probably just produce more of those. I don't see anything wrong. We could update it to a newer version with the uh, four... Uh, quality one four inch guns. I don't. I mean, we could get the, um, them up to thirty five speed or whatever. I, I guess there was that one trick I was thinking we could do, where we could do the speed reliable, the priority, and decrease the cost a bit. So maybe we will make just another ship type. Anyways, let's get these guys up to the front ASAP. Is this a Rubin? It is. That's good. That's something something to work with. Still slower than our battle cruisers. <laughs> And these guys, well, the Rev is on, I don't know if this one is a coal burner or not. I think it actually is. I don't know. Um, okay, well, let's just get them to go 20. The Rev is on, will just eventually probably detach and do its own thing. It looks like our heavy cruisers were never able to make it out. Now their quality is negative one. We might kind of keep them out. Let's leave them as a reserve unit. Okay, more Bravi classes. Let's get these guys up to the front quickly. So these heavy cruisers we're going to leave as like an outside. They will be strictly for killing off any kind of raiders that attempt to go after my uh, dreadnought fleet. Yeah. So that's that's their role. Let's get these guys out of their support things. I just don't find those formations very helpful. This is a destroyer one. Let's have them go. Let's have them go on the outside. And if I can get that top one, there it is. It's the cruiser one, so I want them to go on the inside. And we'll have them just stay with the Dreadnoughts as well. So this will be really interesting. I suspect what we have here is one group and then a second group. This is the Humanity and Molotov are probably technically the scouting force for my Dreadnoughts. It does look like that's the case. So the scout force, we can control these guys independent. Sorry. Um, but this is considered my scout force for the main line. Which means that we have two little anchor points for being within, uh, you know, making sure units don't go to AI control. All right, well, now that you've had to look at that all, all a little bit off for a little bit, let's get that screen centered. Oh, it's almost nighttime. Nighttime is coming quick. So if we want to do anything here, we have to make it happen really, really quickly. Light Cruiser 3. Oh, interesting. That's completely okay. Go to, go to whatever you want. Yeah, you guys should be support though. That's really stupid. <laughs> These guys should be the core role. Let's see if that works. It seems like that took. Yeah, okay, good. And what, oh, okay, so we have something going on over there. Which we'll start making our way towards. Destroyers, they're going squad max, that's good. And the Rubin is just going to try to catch up. We have a bit of craziness going on here. I don't think I changed their formation. Let's go to line ahead. Yeah, and you guys... Maybe stay with the, the Dreadnoughts. Alright, so these guys are dead stops. So whatever this is, I want to get in quickly and start shooting at it. 
because maybe it's something we can destroy before it really gets going. And we saw some ships over there, so we're still going to move these guys west. All right, this is just a minesweeper. That's interesting. What is a minesweeper doing out in these parts? Well, it's probably already dead, being, having been hit by two six-inch guns and only being a 200-ton ship. I mean, just look at the size difference between these, which is probably more or less accurate. <laughs> Let's go ahead and close, though. Okay, there's one. Ah, we have a Kohn-class light cruiser. It's definitely a more modern ship, but we can take this thing. Pretty low armor and only four six inch guns. Especially if we can knock out one of their turrets, they'll be in for a world of hurt. And we can get one, two, three, four. We got a six sided broadside going on. Oh, I really like that. We'll have two ships available. Get our destroyers to run in there for support. Yeah, okay, good, good. I like, I like everything so far. We have to, you know, even take, okay, that thing's dead. We have to take even our small advantages right now. And we know there's other ships over here. There they are. Important that we move that way as well. These guys are still trying to catch up. Let's move them down to 27, though. I'm thinking we cut up and then swing back down. Although, I guess we cut over to the left really hard. Mm hmm no let's not cut let's not pick up survivors from a very small ship okay, you guys probably have to slow down your speed just a tad just let your friend catch up and these guys are gonna be the big boys so that's what our destroyers will run at first I'm gonna put them into whoops Torpedo formation. Well, let's not have torpedo launching encouraged quite yet. Okay, these guys are doing the right thing, engaging that cone. McStabman is now firing at the battle cruiser. Very good, which we've now lost identification of. Very strange. These guys did make their formation switch, which is good. And we are just slowly bringing up the rear over here. Okay, we have a Gobin class, which means what? 20,000 tons. We can handle this guy. Especially if we have four of our ships, I think we will be okay. Go up to 26. Go down to 26. These guys are on a good intercept course. It's gonna force these guys to make some kind of maneuver. And if they push over to the west, I think we have them cut off. This is really good. These guys are flying in very quickly. Okay, squad max. Oh, I see. Still letting the Baudry catch up. I get it. And what is going on here? So they are turning away from our destroyers. Okay, we hit the Koln. A near miss on one of our destroyers, which makes sense. But if we have time to bring our Dreadnoughts up, who are kind of going a little bit the wrong way, can you please stop your screen formation? Another near miss. So they're being targeted by the light cruiser, which I don't want. We could have these guys just run ahead since these guys are obviously going slower. Their speed is only 18. So yeah, what we're gonna have them do is the humanity is gonna take point. Lots of good hits so far, though. 
I'm pretty happy with the way things are going. We hit the goal. Okay, McStabbin took a hit, but did not receive any damage. That's excellent. Our destroyers are closing in on their battle cruisers. Zorki and the Zvani are just getting pelted, which we eh, we're not surprised by that. Gobin is hit again. Wow, the McStabman is deadly accurate so far, just landing a lot of hits. And we already launched a torpedo, which is good to see, actually. Wanting to get in a little bit closer. Looks like our light cruisers are closing as well. Molotov took, took two close hits. One actually penetrated the belt extended. We don't have any armor there, because all or nothing. Oh boy, somebody went into AI control because... <laughs> oh god. Oh, okay. Well, here we go. This is it. This is the big one. Their vetting class ships, uh, yeah, they're terrifying. Our heavy cruisers are on the wrong side. I think the best way of doing that is to slow them down and turn them in. You can see the Revisan is already slowing. We need these guys to go on a torpedo run, so let's just go ahead and set that off. You guys wouldn't mind doing your torpedo run. This is now the, really the secondary battle. We don't really care as much about this. And in fact, it might be better to bring our battle cruisers back in to help defend with the main fleet. I'm not sure what to do about that. We're outnumbered, hugely outnumbered. <sighs> hugely outnumbered. Still landing a few hits on this guy. He's only reporting light damage, and that makes sense, right? Because he has decent armor. We could get a flash fire with his turrets, though. Very low. Ooh. Okay, this is good news. We could take both of these. And we could take this one too. So it's a four on three. And we have it. Their ships are probably individually better, but four on three, I think you'd give us the better, better odds there. Now, what we need to do is push. I actually want to push these battle cruisers on top of us. And I think we're, you know, for better or worse, we're just going to have to try to take advantage of the Revisens. Um, range very limited range but we're gonna have to take advantage of it because i don't see any it's like six on two if we don't take make use of the revisin i mean it's gonna get off a eight turret i mean an eight gun broadside that's not terrible it doesn't have the best armor but all right so here we go another we got a Derflinger hit. None of these things really causing much damage yet. Cone, Zorky. Okay, yeah, our torpedoes are our torpedo boats are expendable. I don't care what class they are, they're expendable. I think we just keep going in this. Oh. Oh, interesting. This is exactly the kind of ship I want to be facing are these two ships with my dreadnoughts. So that makes it a little bit better for us. What do we have here? And this is an old dreadnought ship. Oh, you know what? This battle is winnable. As we identify them more, I'm becoming more and more confident. Their battle cruisers are turning. Let's... Uh... No. Let's just ride out the storm. We're still hitting these guys, and they're turning. It's going to make it very difficult for them to actually put good fire down. Okay, yeah, I think we're doing okay. Okay. 
All right, well, let's just wait for our two Cesarevich class to open up. That's really what this is all about now. We're going to do a lot of maneuvering with the other ships, but you know what? The real issue here is... I'm sure Squad Max is, yeah, <laughs> really bad, but... We don't care. Let anybody who has the will to continue, continue. Looks like we're launching torpedoes at the wrong area, but that's okay. You know, if we can sink that Kong class, it's one less escort they have, and our maybe our light cruisers can get close enough to hit. Not a particularly good turn for us, though. The Vettin, oh my gosh. The Vettin, holy cow. I mean, if the Vettin's launching ship shells at us, oh my gosh, humanity. Oh, the humanity. <laughs> I couldn't help myself, sorry. Okay, now our Cesarevichs are starting to open up, though. And we've still been hitting this Gobin a few times, right? Medium damage. Light damage. Light damage, okay. Doesn't look like our torpedo hit. Although, gosh darn, if that wasn't close. Lots going on here. Okay, so you are main speed. What What is your guys' speeds here? 23... And 20. Oh, okay, so then you guys go squad max and you slow down. We'll, we'll have them take point after all. Yeah, they must have been hit and slowed down to 22 or something. Still hitting them, though. That's good. Just pelt just pelt them while we can, and then we'll probably spin around or something. We do want to take advantage of the fact that they can't retreat west, so if we do any kind of major torpedo runs... I'm looking at this guy. He can get over the top and maybe do a really roundabout torpedo barrage. He'll have support. Yeah, you know what? Something like that is going to happen. It should happen. Okay, unfortunately not a good round for us. We're still hitting them, though. That Prusin is... 12-inch gun. It's a little better. Our battle cruisers are in good shape, besides the one that got slowed down quite a bit. And now their ships have turned into line abreast? Strange formation. We're, we're engaging, so I don't want to do any real turning or anything. We're just going to hope that our boys can land a few shots before nightfall. Okay, there's a barrage, if I ever saw one. Go ahead and turn back. I know you're going to turn right into the light cruiser, but that's okay. We'll get this light cruiser group to go support. Oh my gosh, that is a lot of... Wait, which direction is this guy going? Holy cow, they go, but they've turned. Move in, move in. It's going to bring us closer to the other ones, but you know what? Let's try to take advantage of everything we can before nightfall, like I said. And we're still launching torpedoes, which is fantastic. It's going to be torpedo chaos here. Oh my gosh, how did they avoid all those? All right, on top of that, all their turning is means that we were able to land, okay, five inch hits, not important, but another 11 inch hit. If we can slowly work on this, like this guy, he's taken a few hits, right? Even though we're gonna have not the wind advantage right now, I just wanna push close to these guys and land a few hits. And they are going to have to come back towards my destroyers, who, although completely broken, may have a few torpedoes left. And these guys are trying to track down that cone. This is so interesting. And let's go ahead and make this run at the other group so that they can't come up here and support the battlecruisers. Oh my gosh. Oh, is it a hit? Uh, okay, let's see. Revzan actually hit something. Wow, look at the 13. I'm so glad we took her along. It's not the same group. It's a different group, but that's okay. It's something is getting done, and something is better than nothing. I don't need to make too much of a point about that. Okay, you turn down. They're going to make another turn to the south, so we have to pretty much follow that. But they are going to be turning right into our torpedoes, which is interesting. All right, now let's go down to slow, because I really want to see if maybe this torpedo doesn't hit. Oh, it did! We hit him! 
oh, this is fantastic. And with 20,000, with 20,000 tons, you'd, you'd have to speculate they didn't have torpedo protection. And look at this, these guys are still just lobbing torpedo after torpedo. That's just gonna, they're really gonna cut their turn short. We know that they're gonna head south from here. We know it. So get in there quickly. Close with that cone if we can. These guys are making their turn. Okay, just squad max. And I know that your squad max is low, but even have the other guy bring up speed if he can. For their brave efforts, the Bravi is now sinking. She led her class well, you know? That was the namesake of the class, obviously, the Bravi class. So the Bravi set a good example. Now these guys, ironically, are actually moving towards us, which is fantastic. If we can land a few hits on this guy, we could really do some serious damage. Yeah, uh, just another hit from the Gobin. That's all it took, but Look at that spread of torpedoes. I, lo I love it. I'm loving what I'm seeing here. Now, I did put one destroyer, this guy. He is in charge of making sure these dreadnoughts don't come back. But actually, he might be putting himself in position to take out the battle cruisers when they spin back south. And these guys are my support elements for the dreadnoughts. That's all. I think that all works well. Oh my gosh, that's so many torpedoes. But not in the end, heading in the right direction. All right, so we're closing in on them there. We're doing that. This guy's going over for the cone class. That's intentional. If they are able to lob a few torpedoes, looks like they're reloading. reloading. Wow, still have a starboard, I mean a port. And this one has used both its port. That makes sense. Are you guys' torpedoes fully loaded? So let's try to get these guys to hold off on firing torpedoes for a second. Just so we can try to close the distance very quickly. One more turn maybe, and then we can start firing. And look at this. The first hits, amazing. The first hits from our almighty Cesarevich on this battle cruiser who did kind of spin away. Now, no damage to speak of. No turrets disabled. We don't have any damage reports, but 15 inch shells are going to be penetrating 10 inches of armor. So if that landed anywhere, I'm sure it was a hit. Their dreadnoughts are still spinning away, so this is good. We can. I think what will happen is we'll just push this until nightfall and then we'll disengage. Finally the fleet engagement I've been waiting for. <laughs> and I think so far things have gone well. Knock on wood. Okay, Vonderton hit by another 15 inch shell. Turret disabled, near miss, but overall still things are looking okay. And we're lobbing a few more torpedoes in there, that's fine. Their Colm class is retreating, understandably. We are really pushing our advantage, so the main place that I wanna go is, yes, take out these battle cruisers. and you guys are turning go ahead and launch torpedoes at will they just turn so they're very slow just go to AI control let's see if that helps I don't really know how to get these guys to launch torpedoes well but there's so many torpedoes flying around that any kind of turning right now for them would be really detrimental Okay, another hit in this Vonderton. Do we have any kind of damage report? Only light damage. Well, keep squeaking in on them, just rounding that corner. And while we're waiting, our two other battle cruisers hopefully can close the gap with these guys who are great. Is this guy on fire? It looks like he's on fire. No, just heavy damage. Okay, well, the Vonderton finally was able to return fire. She did penetrate our belt armor. but no real damage to speak of, huh? Very good. I like our Cesarevich class, man. They're a beefy, beefy ship. They can take a 15-inch shell and laugh it off. 
Oh yeah, look at that spread. <laughs> oh. Okay, so two more hits, 15 inch shells landing on this Vonderton. It only has light armor. And it's only a 28,000 ton ship to begin with, so we should be really starting to do some serious damage with that. Okay, I think that that's adequate. We're still getting our broadside off there. These guys aren't getting a broadside off, but they're in the, they are trying to close. So I think that's okay. Let's just run right at these guys. They should be moving much slower. And we just came off a turn, so our speed is, wow, is it actually 27? 23, okay. That makes more sense. But the Dreadnoughts are also spinning up this way, so we'll have to be a little careful about that. It's not worth going after a single light cruiser if you're gonna risk two light cruisers yourself to Dreadnoughts. We almost surely cannot get any damage done with them. Otherwise, not much happening on this. In the last minute. All right. So it looks like we have identified another one of their ships, and this is a light one. It's really two heavy ships against two heavy ships the Cesarevich versus the Vetten and the Vonderton. And we've already done some good things to the Vonderton, I think. Two more hits on it. Maybe this is our battle. Maybe we should just take it to them. We're obviously gro grossly outnumbered. But maybe we can still do something about this. Okay, good. I'm seeing good things. Okay, Gobin, that's not as important. 5-inch guns is all I'm seeing. At least one more on the Vonderton. This guy's still only claiming light damage, though. And that has to be a very scary moment when the Vettin fired light, just their medium guns at the light cruiser and already hit them. <laughs> okay, lots going on here. Small hits. Two more 15-inch guns on this Vonderton. Still only claims light damage. Deflinger. Light damage. Gobin, small hit. Gobin, normal hit. Should be taken. It's still at heavy damage. And another turret destroyed on the McStabin. So we have a few that have lost turrets here. Just the McStabin? I. Okay, I probably saw a turret disabled before on the Mal 39. Oops, who did that? Okay, yeah, that's fine. Actually, keep turning. You're going to shift behind these battle cruisers. And you guys are coming in. Yep, this is good. We're putting good pressure there. Oh, God, no. Whoops. Oh, shoot. Go that way. You're cutting back. That's good. You guys need to cut back. That's where we're going to let the Dreadnoughts kind of run off to. And I'll make a decision later whether we want to pursue. All right. Mal39 has another turret disabled. McStabin took a super structure hit, penetrated. Deflinger took an 11 inch hit. Looks like we disabled a turret. And two more hits on the Deflinger. Well, she's still alive and well, but we're starting to do some damage. It's madness here. We're crisscrossing everywhere. Ooh. Looks like their ships are actually coming in. Their escorts are coming in. I'm gonna fall back with the McStabman group. Doesn't seem like it's necessary to keep them so close. And what is the Vonderton? They're turning back. Okay, decision point. Decision point is go with the Vonderton. In fact, we need a vessel. We don't have any vessels fast enough to actually close with her. <laughs> We want to get to this Vonderton. All right, looks good. This looks like it was a good turn. 11 inch hits. Two more 11 inch hits on this Gobin, who's probably sinking now. 
Hit the Colm, that's nice. Hit the Derflinger with 11 inch guns, we're not going to care about that. Turret disabled, hit on the top of the turret, mouth 39, how you doing buddy? Hanging in there. Well, things have developed very, in a really interesting way so far. Um, another good turn for us, looks like a 15 inch hit on the Deflinger, that's going to be very damaging. And then a bunch of 5 inch hits. Well, I'm going to pause this video here. It's been 35 minutes, so what we'll do is we'll put a break in the action. It'll give me a time to think about what I should be doing anyway. Give you guys a chance to comment, I'm sure. <laughs> but I'm happy that we finally had a fleet engagement, and what's more, it has started off, at least, in our favor. If we can keep this up, if we can... I mean, I would love to sink that Vondertan. Just nothing would please me more. It's only claiming light damage, although how many hits have we landed on it? Okay, there's not any recently, huh? Two 15 inch hits, another 15 hit, three more 15 here, it's five total. Two more here, seven total. Eight total, nine total. I mean, come on. 10, 12, 13, 13 15 inch hits? Good God, uh, 13 15 inch hits is, I mean to a ship of only 28,000 tons? With this kind of armor, I, I just cannot imagine she's in good shape. Ah, well, we won't find out until next time, though. So, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys for part two of this video in the next episode.